All right, so we're having an exclusive interview with uh, Chief Baba Femi Branch, actor and producer, Nollywood actor and producer, that is. And as we're carrying on with the conversation, we want to talk about Witness Box now. So before we delve into that, uh, we'll bring you a quick clip of Witness Box before we talk about it. Take a quick look. Are you aware that um, you tell us the to down? commit perjury is a punishable offence? What thing be that? Perjury. Perjury. I don't know why they talk. Madam, it simply means to lie under oath. This man, this man, this man. What's your name? Captain, please kindly instruct the witness to simply answer yes or no. I sincerely doubt it will work, Mr. Chris. And in that case, I, I have no problem. Wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just don't. Back out! The choice. Do you just barge into ongoing conversations? Yes! Pass close! All right, so that was a quick clip of Witness Box, just to show you a little bit of the talent that was involved in that movie. So let me come to you quickly regarding... Let me ask you, because I've been dying to, like, how was it working with Shola Shebawale? Oh, it wouldn't be the first time we're working together, really together over the years okay but uh, as usual <laughs> because you cracked up cracked up when we were watching it and even now you're cracking up so <laughs> no, there must no, be no. something you can tell I, ju I just don't tire for Amata she <laughs> don't, I don't tire for Amata honestly you know she's she's so effervescent as in you, you in just have to of her energy toes mm. when you're with her and uh, but she's a fantastic actor fantastic actor fantastic so uh, my note is um, you had to get into character of a lawyer, did you undergo some training to learn some legal terms and all of that to be able to play this role? Well, to be, well, the, here's the thing. Um, some years back, I've, I actually did a research because I, <laughs> I actually did law in the f my first year in school because I was actually supposed to go and study law. Okay. That was why I found that every day to go and do now I went to go study <laughs> Anyway, that's a long story. You know, but uh, I was when I was writing one of my plays, uh, Jungle Justice. I had to do a lot of research about courtrooms and the court procedure and all of that. So um, it, this was something that took me almost like two years. I visited courtrooms, I listened, and the play was actually because I saw the seriousness of the court. And all these lawyers, are, they're so they stuck up there, you know, they feel that they're better than anybody, anybody mm -hmm. else and everything. <clears throat> so I just wanted to, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to just demystify that and like, you know, cool down it, you know. So in the, in the course of writing that play, um, I, I, I did a lot of research on lawyers, on you know, the law, on courts, the judges and all of that. So which stood me in very good stead when I was given this role to play. So I'm very, very, so it was, it was something that, and that's the first time I would actually be playing. That's not the first time I'm playing a lawyer, by the way. Okay. But that's the time that I will actually be. be it, it was a well-written script, well put together. Because that's another problem we have. Most, most of our scripts they're not they're not well put together. They're not well researched. Mm -hmm. They're so watery in terms of legal terminologies and all of that. And but this was a good job. It was well written. Mm -hmm. okay. And when it's a, an actor comes in contact with a script that is well put together, well researched, I mean, it just like gives you. You understand what I? <laughs> uh, you understand? So it makes, it makes the job so much yeah. easier for you. So I think that was it. Of course, then again, the people I was working with and uh, the, the director and all of that, it, it, was, it was good synergy that helped in delivering the role. Okay. okay. So what would make this movie stand out? Because it's not in cinemas yet. Mm -hmm. What would make it stand out from all the other movies we've seen this year? Because um, we were informed by the executive producer, Oli mm. Jomo, that it would be in cinemas next year. So mm. what would make it stand out? Well, there are so many things. Um, <clears throat> we, I, I think it's uh, because I was, I was aware that uh, recently the Nigerian Bar Association was, um, well, I think some people had some meetings with them or something, and they were complaining about the way we portrayed lawyers in court in, in courts and everything, and right from even the dressing to the, you know, the carry, the, the, this, even the scripting and all of that. I think this is one 
I know that there's some some work that have come out in recent times that have really done a good job in the courtroom, but I think this will be one of those that has really represented the legal profession well and you know showed us to be serious professionals. You know, um, then aside from that, the, the theme of the movie itself, you know, is something that I think that people would really need to see, which uh, of course talk about domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. And um, I am particularly interested in the in one, one aspect of that domestic abuse, which is not the physical one, because most of the time when we talk about domestic abuse, we're talking about you physical know, abuse. white veteran mm -hmm. everything. But there's there's one that is even worse, you know, which uh, excuse me, we all undergo. It's not just it's mm -hmm. not a gender thing. Mm -hmm. The, the psychological abuse, in fact, is, it plays both ways. There's a way a woman can do that or, or to her partner. There's a way a man can do that. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and that was one of the themes that was explored in this movie. And I think that's one of the things that the audience will find very refreshing mm -hmm. to see that. You know, and um, the way the law came into it and the way the whole thing played out at the end of the day, I think it was a very well done job that people would just love to see. So I think it will do very well in the cinema. Yes, and it has, of course, all elements and everything, even the comic aspect as well. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm not one of those that believes that a, a film can only do well in the cinema if it has comedy in it. Mm. That has been the norm for some years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad when I see people like um, Kemi Adetiba come out with a job like King of Boys, and it's not a comedy, mm -hmm. and it's 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 smashing the box office. Yeah. We need more of that. I was really upset when I started hearing that you know, it has to be comedy, not it can sell and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like seriously, you know? So, but even though there, there's some comedy in this film, but the issues are real and it's, it's serious. And I think it's something that people would really enjoy and benefit a lot from. Did you actually come up with any kind of, uh, did you play any, was there any comedy in terms of your character? Because I know you were a serious lawyer. Oh, no. there. So was there any comedy? Oh, no, None no, whatsoever. No. I was, no, I was, I was a, I was a professional. I was yeah. a, I was a, I was a serious character. Mm -hmm. and the reason why I ask is, you know, I, I sense that, and that's why I'm asking, you know, if you were comfortable with, with the character, because I know you're an actor, you can mm. play any role, yes. but is that a character that you were comfortable with, someone that serious? Because the impression I get you being on set right now is that, you know, you're not that serious and you don't take life too seriously, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Look, <laughs> 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 how to frame you. <laughs> Just someone in my house. <laughs> I just carry you about. So just record. So when anybody say anything, ah, listen. listen. Like, <laughs> like seriously, you will be one of the few people that say that. Mm. Like I mean, people have this general impression that I'm always this very hard. Oh, but your wife also said something similar like that. to that about you. That what? That you are quite jovial and. You yeah, I mean that's if you that that that's what I'm saying. That people you know, because most of the roles I play are you know bad boy roles and all that you know. So people have um, this tendency to like define you by what they see the persona mm -hmm. they see on screen and it just be hard for him to do the thing so well. But then I would be a fraud. Mm -hmm. Then I wouldn't be an actor. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because it, that's my job. That's what I do. You, know, you don't say because a surgeon is able to open up someone up mm -hmm. and do whatever needs to be done and so you say, hmm, he must be a killer in real life for him to be able to do that. And You understand? Mm -hmm. That's what he's trained for. That's what he does for I mean, that's his job. So um, that, that's, that's, that's not who I am. So, but being able to play that serious, I, I loved playing it. Mm -hmm. I loved playing it. It was one of the um, non-violent serious roles that I've had to play. It's always a breath of fresh air when I, when I get to do that. Mm -hmm. So I loved playing that character. Okay, so you mentioned psychological abuse. Mm. And right now in Nigeria, we are still fighting physical abuse. Mm. We are not yet in that place where people even understand that it is very terrible. You see people who still say, oh, you did, you got this beating because you did this, victim mm. shaming. Yes. Do you think we are at a point where we can understand what this movie is trying to do with psychological abuse right now? Why not? It's, it's our story. Mm -hmm. It's not about some, someone from Mars. The average person will have someone that is, they might not know, they might not know what to call it. Okay. Do you understand? Mm. What we have just done is to give it a name. But almost every child, in, I, I say that with all audacity, almost every child from the average Nigerian home must have experienced some form of psychological abuse, must have from between his parents. Hmm. Now, we need to understand what psychological, like I, I try to explain a bit now, you understand? As in, 
It can be as basic as you guys have a misunderstanding. She cooks food. You refuse to eat it. Mm. Do you understand? Knowing that, knowing what that, because that, the, the, the whole idea of psychological abuse is you know what that thing is going to do to that person. Mm -hmm. So it's not really the, the thing, how heavy the thing looks or how serious it looks. It might not look serious to you, but the person doing it, does he know how, what kind of um, effect, effect he's going to have on that person? If he does and he, he's doing it, that means he's doing it with an intent to hurt that person, mm -hmm. to, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's what we're talking about. Now, that is one, the one that is very commonplace in most Nigerian homes. Mm -hmm. You know, the man is angry and everything, and the next thing is not eating the woman's food, mm -hmm. and it's not one day, two days, three days, and everything. You know, like my wonder, some women are very, you're you not hungry. When you're hungry, you, mm -hmm. you understand? Yeah. So, <laughs> but when it gets to a certain stage, you know, you now get starts getting to the woman, and you're like, ah, okay, come, is it this thing we're talking about? Is there something else? You understand? It will affect the person because it is a form of rejection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse Sorry. me. It's a form of rejection, and it it can also be be a deprivation, as in like sex. Do you understand? As in because because you know the kind of there are some women that if you deprive them of sex, it doesn't really make any difference with that because they don't really get it that much anyway. Sorry, it's on television, but no, that's true. That's true. It. You understand? They don't mm -hmm. really get it, so it doesn't really work. But there are some that are so emotion emotionally attached, physically to to their spouses that just one day they are they are messed up. Do you understand? So if that person knows that and uses that against that person, that's psychological abuse. Mm -hmm. So it's about what you know can harm that person. It's not so much, as, ah, is it just because he didn't sleep with you? Like, seriously? Mm. But he knows how that affects you. Mm -hmm. And he has gone ahead to use it against you. That is psychological abuse. So everybody knows that. Everybody experiences that. Everybody have one person or the other that is experiencing that around them. So it's not, it's not, it's not going to be something totally strange to the average Nigerian audience. Okay. You understand? So what we, they might know they were doing psychological abuse, eh? what was that? Mm. But by the time you break it down, by the time yeah. they see it, they're like, ah, okay, ah, get, oh, is that the psychological abuse? Uh -uh. <laughs> my mother should be dead by then, <laughs> because my, mother, my father is always, you understand? But, so the fact that the woman did not die mm -hmm. does not mean that she was not affected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if a psychiatric evaluation were to have been done on her at that period, you will understand that she had been scarred somehow. Mm -hmm. The fact that she's able to heal from that and still go on because of how things were then, as in mm, loyalty to husband and all that, doesn't mean that she was not affected. So it's, it's, an, it's our everyday story. Everybody knows. So the fact that they might not understand the name does not mm -hmm. mean that, that it, it's not commonplace. Okay. okay. Because well, you sound so knowledgeable about this, uh, uh, um, the psychological and everything. Mm. I, I'm, I'm just beginning to wonder if you, if you are an advocate for things like this or any other, because I'm not sure. I don't know, so I, I just was, wanted to clarify. I was also going to say that in a twist, I would like to see a movie where we're not just making the women the victim, because if you're talking about psychological abuse, domestic abuse, mm. and all of yeah. that, men also suffer from yeah. that. But no one has come out to portray that. OK, no. sorry, I I'm still, I'm still want to hone in on my yes, question. Yes, you know, I'll take, yeah. I'll, take that as, I'll take that as well. Yeah, well, okay. yes. Um, I like I have I have um, uh, an initiative called uh, the Brown Foundation. Okay. Where I uh, well it, it it handles so many things. It's not just one thing, but that is one of the things that we actually uh, talk about, as in uh, uh, domestic relationships, really. Okay. As in then the place of abuse, mm -hmm. and not really concentrating so much on just the physical. There are, there are more things that there are things that are more you know mm -hmm. um, harmful than even physical abuse and all of that. So we're doing some things presently regarding that. Okay, you know. and does that apply to to is it, is it gender based or all? No, it's not. It's okay. like it's. It, that's why I said in, initially that it's it affects both sexes. Okay. It's okay. it cuts both both ways. No, I mean with your foundation, if it helps both as well. That, yeah, yeah, okay. it's both. Okay. It's both. Okay. You know. So um, then uh, you're asking why I was so knowledgeable at all and everything is that because I'm a writer. You know, okay. and being a writer, and I come from uh, from like I was trained by uh, Professor Olarochimi okay. of blessed wow. memory, okay. and and one thing he taught he taught was about um, writing or uh, developing content for theatre. Then was that it's like there's no that after research, the next mm -hmm. thing you have to do is research. Then mm -hmm. just end it by researching. Mm -hmm. As in, you have to be well informed. So mm -hmm. he was the one that. Made taught us that look if you want to like write about that you be it, 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 you be insulting a particular uh, uh, profession or discipline if you're writing about it and you're not not well informed okay. that is an insult to that profession so you must understand them you must leave possible you must spend time with them before you can 
think because writing is like putting yourself in the place of God, mm. especially when you're creating fiction. It's like you're God at that moment because you are creating human beings. You are, you are putting flesh on them, sinew, bones, mm -hmm. and all of that. And you say, okay, this is Tadi. And you created, okay, this is Hilda. Mm -hmm. And you understand, you are creating people. So if you're now, if you're now dealing with existing characters or professions or location or things like that, mm -hmm. then you must get the correct information about them. If not, you will cause problems for people who do not know about it and who have to rely solely on what you have created to have knowledge of that thing mm -hmm. and they now eat all of that only to find out later that they were okay. misinformed mm -hmm. okay all right unfortunately we're out of time so we're going to have to wrap it up here we've been chatting to nollywood producer and actor chief baba femi branch thank you very much for coming on the show it's a pleasure all right and that's how we're going to wrap up we'll see you later bye <laughs>